Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Lion Gate Park in beautiful Bloomfield, New Jersey. Really, really feels great to say. As the skies part, and we uh, we showed the resiliency of the wetland a few minutes ago. This has been a very long and difficult project that has had many obstacles to overcome. Many of you in attendance today know the history of this site, but for those of you who don't, please indulge me for a moment because it's important to know how we got here today. In 1922, the Clark Thread Company brought, bought this property because of the fresh water supply to help process and dye their cotton. In 1949, they relocated and sold their property to Bill Geyer, a Bloomfield resident inventor and owner of Scientific Glass Apparatus Company. For over 35 years, Scientific Glass flourished, manufacturing glass instruments for laboratories and pharmaceutical companies until they closed their doors and raised the buildings in the mid-1980s. For over two decades, the property lay dormant, an eyesore that had its own share of environmental concerns. In the early 2000s, a group of concerned citizens began advocating to halt future development and address flooding concerns in the area. At what point, this property was slated for an additional 148 townhouses and 298 parking spaces. Over the past decade, the Township of Bloomfield, along with partner organizations on the local, county, state, and federal level, worked tirelessly to acquire this property, preserve open space, address flooding concerns, and create rec recreational opportunities for our residents. The idea for Lion Gate Park was born. Fast forward to today, Lion Gate Park is a state-of-the-art facility and is a shining example of a brownfield to greenfield. A once abandoned site now offers a wide variety of active and passive recreational opportunities. A multi-use turf field for soccer and football, walking paths with exercise stations, a nature-themed tot lot playground with a 4.2 acre freshwater wetland that will serve home to an abundance of wildlife not to mention it could hold up to 10 million gallons of water, offering flood protections to homes and businesses in this area and downstream. It truly is one of a kind park right here in Bloomfield. As you know, projects like this don't happen overnight and they definitely don't happen without partnerships and unwavering support. While we can't acknowledge all of those supporters, please know that on behalf of the Township of Bloomfield, we thank you for your support and we hope you know that your efforts will have a lasting impact on future generations. We're going to be calling up uh, some dignitaries to speak uh, on their behalf and, and in their partnership with us, but uh, at this time I just wanted to recognize um, some, of, some of our dignitaries here. We have uh, Sal Goncavis, Joe Flores, Vicki Guo from the Board of Ed, Bloomfield Board of Ed. I also see uh, President Joe Fishman, Jess Salinas, uh, Jess Salinas, and Shane Berger from our Board of Ed. I want to thank you for coming out. And we also have our Rec uh, Advisory Committee, uh, President Mike Canalupo, and committee members Louis Felix, Steve Jenkins, and Papa Tall. Without further ado, I'd like to call up the New Jersey DEP Commissioner, Sean Lotteret. A little shorter than you, Sammy. <laughs> so good morning, Bloomfield. What an amazing, amazing place you've created. Uh, and it's it's really an honor to be here. And I think uh, uh, a bit symbolic is the fact that the clouds are now starting to part. Uh, but even when uh, I walked in here and it was pouring, uh, the energy uh, in this space and the excitement, it helped me feel the sun. So you should all be so proud of yourselves for the advocacy that went into making this happen, for the commitment of your leaders from the township and the county, the state government, the advocacy that went into making this park happen moved all of those pieces and helped bring this into to reality. So I'd like to give every advocate that fought for this moment a big round of applause. Thank you. You know, it, it, it's my pleasure to join you this morning on, on behalf of Governor Murphy, uh, and I'd be remiss if I did not note 
the deep, deep commitment across our administration to making sure that we are deploying the resources to our local partners to make places like this a reality. Right? Over the last three years, we've invested nearly $170 million in parks and open space, thanks to the good work of the Green Acres program. And we're about to release $85 million more this year. It's incredible, incredible. And so thank you to Martha Sapp uh, and to the entire Green Acres team. They just celebrated their 60th anniversary. Thank you. And I also have to mention uh, the work of DEP's Office of Natural Resource Restoration because our efforts to hold polluters accountable for the impacts to our natural resources help make this a reality also. So uh, a deep thanks to our Office of Natural Resource Restoration, our site remediation and brownfields programs, because when we can take a space that was once fallow, former industrial land subject to contamination, and turn it into something green and beautiful, something that invites the community, that, that says to every person, this is for you. It's not something off limits, it's not something dangerous. We, turned it in, we turn it into something important, something that is part of the lifeblood of the community. I think about parks as a space where people can come together, and especially after the last 15 months when we've all been too far <laughs> apart to cut a ribbon on some place this special, I think is a reflection on how much we all need one another. And a park is a place where you can come together. A park doesn't care where you come from, what you look like, how much money you make or don't, what your faith is or who you love. A park is for everyone. So I look forward to bringing my kids to this place so that they can see what a wonderful job uh, you have all done. Congratulations. Thank you, Sean. We also neglected to, uh, to mention uh, Board of Ed member Mike Heller, so thank you for joining us as well. As people roll in, I have to keep announcing, so but thank you everyone for your support. Uh, up next, we have U.S. Congresswoman Mikey Sherrill. Well, it is incredibly exciting to be here, and how beautiful. You know, as a, a soccer mom and a lacrosse mom, I can tell you the gold standard of parks in our densely populated area of North Jersey is a field. <laughs> so having this gorgeous field here is going to make such a huge difference to the community here in Bloomfield. I know you're all familiar with the phrase, Trenton makes, the world takes. I think that phrase could be expanded to say, New Jersey makes, the world takes. And because of all of the hard work, the innovation, the manufacturing we've had over the years, unfortunately, we've also suffered the cost, environmental degradation. And so we've seen across North Jersey, a state with more Superfund sites than anywhere else in the nation, the need we have to remediate, the need we have to create these green spaces. And there isn't a better example across the country of what we're seeing right here. And it took time and it took dedication, and it took a community coming together, and it took the support of so many people here today that, you know, so we finally see after about a decade this wonderful space created. So it's a, a perfect example of everyone coming together. So I want to thank so many people who are here today. I want to thank our fantastic mayor, our council members. I want to thank our county commissioner. I want to thank our county executive. I want to thank our assemblyman. I want to thank everyone here today who has had a part and a hand in making such a beautiful park. Because ensuring projects like the Lion Gate Park have the support they need has been a key priority for me in Congress. In fact, this park and this idea led to me putting forth federal legislation to support brownfields across the country because unfortunately it's not just New Jersey 
that has taken the brunt of environmental degradation. We see degradation. We see it across the nation, and so I think we will see places like this in Cleveland and Detroit and manufacturing across the country because they will follow the example of Bloomfield, New Jersey. I get made fun of in Congress because I think New Jersey is the epicenter of the country. But right now, today, I'm being proven that I'm right because this is such a wonderful vision of the future of this country. So thank you, everyone who's had a hand in this. Thank you so much for your hard fight to create such a beautiful park. Thank you again. Next, we have a, uh, a gentleman who is no stranger to, uh, to parks, especially here in Essex County. Essex County Executive Joseph DiVincenzo. You know, I've been to, I go to many, many press conferences uh, throughout uh, the year. But when they call me in reference to open space and parks, that goes, of course, on top of the list. Today is a great day for Bloomfield, it's a great day for Essex County, and it's a great day for the state. And I want to thank Congresswoman Mikey Sherrill. She's only been here for a short time, yeah, but she knows how to bring the money home. And I just want to thank you, Mikey, uh, for all your support on the state level. Governor Murphy uh, uh, and his uh, Sean. To, where's Martha, who we've been fighting for 19 years with? What she was <laughs> to Kathy. There's one thing I heard. There was $85 million given out this year. Just make sure Essex County gets its fair share. Make sure Bloomfield gets its fair share. And also on the state level, Assemblyman Ralph Caputo. And of course, your very own uh, Vice President uh, Carlos Palmaris on the county side. But where it really happened is right here in Bloomfield. And why this happened, 19 years ago when I first got elected as a county exec, Nick Joanna was playing both sides. He was playing the give one side, he was playing my side. And whoever he got first, he would bring to here to say, listen, this is what Bloomfield needs. And he stood fast, and he made it happen, and he made sure the people got in the right positions to make this happen because this would not have happened if it wasn't his, his vision. And it was for Mayor Venezia, <laughs> Mayor Venezia and the council that really came together. Bloomfield is a very, very special place. You know, we have 22 great towns, but there's no question about it when you look at it. Bloomfield is on the move when it comes to development, but it also comes on the move when it talks about creating parks and open space. I couldn't be more pleased today. I know my good friend uh, Brendan Gill, our commissioner and stuff, uh, I know how much he supported. Did I say freeholder per my or did I say commissioner? You said commissioner, so you're right. I did say commissioner. Mm -hmm. I can't get it in my head. But to this young guy, Mike Venezia, thank you. Thank you for your leadership. You too know how to get money. When you're down there before me and Trenton, I get a little upset. You're always first. But let's continue what we're doing here in Essex County. Essex County, believe it or not, just like Bluefield, is on the move. I mean, all our parks throughout this county have been redone, and it's something that I'm very, very proud of. But I couldn't do it without the support of the 22 towns working cooperatively. So today's a great day for Bluefield. My congratulations, Councilpeople, congratulations. Thank you, Joe. From the New Jersey Legislator, Assemblyman Ralph Caputo. I purposely left my uh, jacket in the car because I thought I was going to get rained on, so I don't have the money for re for cleaning, Joe. So I got to be very careful about this. But let's uh, let's you know all the great things that were said, and I'm so happy that Congresswoman is here and everybody from the state. Uh, I want to say a word about Joe D. first. You know, he really set the tone for Essex County in terms of projects like this. I know personally because I was on the Board of Freeholders for nine years, and believe me, there was no leader in the state that went out after resources to redo our parks. And what makes it so difficult here, as it did in Bloomfield, as it did in the state of, uh, county of Essex, is that you're swimming upstream. This is a very dense urban area that we live in in Essex County. So to get a project like this accomplished, and projects that Joe accomplished in this, on the county level, is not an easy task. 
And uh, the fact that you know where the money is and you go get it and you get the cooperation of all those individuals that serve on the municipal, county, and state level and all the right buttons to push, we had this guy knocking the doors down showing us how to do it. And the model that was set on the county is now you see the result of what municipalities can do on their own with cooperation. So I was proud, and I have to admit, I was educated about this because I, uh, 20 years ago, I didn't know much about it, to be honest. And when I, when I saw Joe in operation, now Michael, as the mayor, uh, carries out the same formula. There's a formula to this. And the crazy guy here, Nick Joanna, who made me lose 16 pounds when I ran for in the primary in 2002, because that's when I learned about this glass company. It had me crazy. I said, what's that? And he really was a pioneer and devoted. And the fact that everybody here has shown up today to show that kind of support, in spite of the weather being in and out, is it really a credit to your job, Nick, and a credit to the mayor and to the council. Uh, God bless you guys for doing this. This is a jewel here in the town, something to be very proud of. I'm proud to be a representative of the town of Bluefield. I couldn't be happier to be a part of this. And as Mike knows, and as Joe knows, and as the congresswoman knows, we will do everything we can to cooperate to make sure that the town gets what they need and that we move forward. As I said, upstream. This is not a downstream project. This is an upstream project. Everything we do here is harder because of the lack of space, and the fact that, as the congresswoman said, the industrialized nature of the of the properties that we that we deal with. So thanks for having me. I appreciate it. God bless you, Bob Bruce. So you knew you ran against me, but it was all right. <laughs> <laughs> At least I won. I appreciate it. Up next, we have Essex County Board of County Commissioners. Bloomfield's own Vice President Carlos Pomares. Good afternoon. I'm joined by the members of my staff, uh, fellow CETA Chief of Staff Pomares, and uh, Mario Director of Fun Pomares. Carlos, come on up here, put the umbrella down. And my consigliere, Carlos Jr. <laughs> They're a little shy. Well, my daughter isn't shy about anything, but they, the boys are a little shy. Um, you know, Mike Scarman started us off today with a brief history of what uh, took place here. And I want to give a, a much shorter history over the last five years. It was five years ago in Bloomfield that a new park was created called Canal Park at Oak Tree Lane. It was three years ago today that the Morris Canal Greenway launched a series of signs that go five miles throughout the entire town. And today, here we are, the culmination of a tremendous amount of work and a huge amount of obstacles, and I couldn't be prouder. It was just a few years back where then I was a council candidate, along with council candidate Dr. Davis and Councilman uh, Venezia and Councilman Joanna, we pledged our support to this project when we were going to get elected, and we did. And uh, sure enough, we lived up to that. And there were some pretty hostile meetings where people came out against it, and uh, I hope they uh, uh, will come and join us now and see how nice this park turned out. But in a town that's 95% developed, you can't pass up an opportunity to cobble together 18 acres of land for anything positive in open space. And here we are. I want to congratulate uh, my uh, Mayor Venezia and council colleagues, and especially my good friend Nick Joanno, because he was the lone guy on that council before all of us got involved, uh, you know, doing what he could to keep things open. And uh, the, other, the other note that I wanted to bring is my kids here, because they were about this tall. Um, this guy was about this tall. Uh, Mario was still in the stroller and diapers. He was much smaller, and my daughter was somewhere in the middle. And they, they looked at me as something of a hero, because I voted for this place. And I put it in context of, like, Daddy and his friends, Mayor Vinny's and others, we're trying to save this land, because there isn't a lot of open space left. And by doing so, we can help the flooding problems that we had, that we've seen down, you know, uh, downstream. And uh, they were big fans of this. And uh, we would come periodically. There were mounds of dirt. And uh, they were a little skeptical about the progress. And I said, no, it's, it's coming. <laughs> and as we got to know Mike Skirman, they would ask Mike, uh, Mike, what's going on with that park? Don't you run the parks? And he would say, what, Mike? It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> and and uh, here it is. 
and uh, everybody here. Uh, it's great to see so many smiling faces because this this really is not a, a, a wonderful project executed by the Township of Bloomfield. It's not just a staple for Essex County. It is really a landmark for the state of New Jersey and beyond on how to get it done in urban areas. As a kid who grew up in Union City in the concrete jungle, we had one small park about that big. Everybody had a foot in it, and it would just get beaten to death because there was so much of a need. Here, by adding 18 acres of park, Barry and crew can play soccer. We can come and watch the wildlife. We can enjoy a visit. Anybody can. And I think the most important part about this whole thing is that it was a decision with that you know, lasts in perpetuity. And I think for the few of us who are elected, when you have that few opportunities to make a decision in perpetuity, as Joe has, as Ralph has, as Brendan has, and all of the council members here, you don't have that opportunity to make a decision that will last multi-generations. So one day, I hope, when they rededicate this, when they renovate this park 15 years from now or so, or maybe longer, it should last longer, uh, or better, <laughs> my kids could be here with their grandkids. And they will be talking about how dad and his friends and all of the people he worked with had something to do with the preservation of this land. So I'm honored to be a small piece of it. Thank you all for having us here today. And uh, let's see what else we can do to preserve some green space. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carlos. This time I would like to bring up the mayor of the Township of Bloomfield, Michael J. Venezia. So before I speak, I'm gonna ask members of the council to come up here and uh, join me in our, uh, Matt Watkins, our former Township Administrator. I can't <laughs> say a minute, come on up. give the microphone for two minutes and somebody please set a timer for Councilman Nick Joanno. <laughs> two minutes. Two minutes, Nick. We're going to hold you. That's unrealistic. Let's get real. 21 years worth of effort by a grassroots members of this community got together in a driveway one day and decided that it doesn't make sense to build on a floodplain. We have a flooding issue in town. And for 21 years, the Bloomfield Third River Bank, residents, just normal, everyday residents, got together and advocated, came together, had parades, did all kinds of stuff to draw awareness to an issue that back in the early 2000s, we were viewed as river rats. We were viewed as tree huggers. We were simply out of sync with society back in 2000. We were pariahs. We didn't belong in this world. Fortunately, over time, and it took 20 years for the rest of the world to catch up to what we were talking about, that open space has value. Flooding is an issue. With the pandemic that we have just gone through last year, the realization that mental health, open space, recreation is so critical to the overall mental and physical well-being of people. And as Carlos and others have mentioned, this is a legacy that will live forever. And there's, without every single person, and I say every, the DEP, the mayor, the council, the advocates back then, this would not be a reality today. Every one of them played a part to see that this project came to fruition. I am absolutely elated. I am thrilled. As our DEP commissioner mentioned, when people come to parks, they leave their baggage at the door. A perfect example are those children having one good time for the last 20 minutes. That's what it's all about, folks. Fun. And when we move forward and the mental health issue becomes so critical, Part of DEP needs to look at the impact that open space, recreation, has on our mental well health. We need to just release some of that energy, and we can do it in a nonpartisan way on a park and have one hell of a time doing it and enjoying it. And I applaud DEP for the support that they have given from back in the day 
way back in the day when, again, we became from River Rats to Visionaries. That's a, it took a while. And Bloomfield, as has been mentioned, is at the forefront. It doesn't stop at the border of Bloomfield. And Joe D has always been a leader in park development. Kudos. It's going to go well beyond our borders to the state. This is what you, how you do it. How political entities at different levels come together for the right reason to doing the right thing. And we have done, all of us, the right thing for the right reasons. We are the gold standard. Come here to Bloomfield. Come see our mayor and council on how we operate. This is the end result of it. It is fantastic. Learn from us. And I said too, I think I'm over, but listen, thank you all for <laughs> thank you all for listening. I'm getting the hook. Thank you, Councilman. So thank you everyone for being here today. This is uh, a long time coming and it's a uh, it's a great day. I I want to thank our DEP commissioner for being here, Assemblyman Ralph Caputo, County Executive Joe D, um, Carlos Pamaris, and of course our Congresswoman. This is actually a big week, not only for Bloomfield, but Essex County, our County Executive, who I learned a ton from, is opening up a brand new building on Thursday. Let's give that a big round of applause. And the, uh, one, of the, one of the best aspects of it, not only is it a brand new beautiful building, but he honors John Lewis in a part of it. So that's extremely important. I, I just want to recognize my council colleagues. We have uh, Councilman Ted Gamble, Councilwoman Sarah Cruz, Councilman Nick Joanno, um, Councilman Rich Rockwell, Councilwoman Martina Davis, and Councilwoman Jenny Mundell. Thank you for being here with me today. And of course, our former, you know, it pains me to say former Township Administrator, Matt Watkins, who, uh, <laughs> who worked on this project day in and day out for uh, a long time. Um, I want to recognize our engineers, architects, consultants, environmental experts who also worked on this project. Um, many of you did a great job. This project was uh, very tiresome, very long. But we all got it done, and I just want to recognize you, and let's give them a big round of applause. You know, this park is extremely important to me. I grew up right around the corner from here, and as a child, it was nothing but a pile of rubble, a torn down building that was left in shambles. It was a true eyesore for the community. Um, my brother, Mike Skirman, and I, used to throw the rocks, the rubble, the mercury. It was a, uh, it was not a nice sight back here, but we all came back here, the kids in the neighborhood all came back here and uh, played. But I always saw that this area had so much potential. Um, and in the early 2000s, it was set to be 150 townhomes. Then the township had a chance to take it over in 2014 when uh, myself, Councilwoman Davis, Councilwoman P Councilman Pamaris had a chance to join up with Councilman Joanno and make this project into a reality. We set out to turn this once brown field into a green field and create a beautiful community space for all to enjoy. And like Councilman Joanno said, just look behind us, you see two children playing. But once we took it over, we found out this abandoned factory left behind significant damage to the environment and we wanted to make sure that we restored the wetlands. Also with Councilman Joanno, I want to recognize a lot of members of the community. Let's give them a big round of applause because <laughs> you guys fought tirelessly for 20 years to make this a reality. You helped us with the support and vision to make this beautiful open, sp open space a reality. This project could not have been completed without grant, grant funding from the wetlands mitigation and Green Acres funding from the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection, which we greatly appreciate, so thank you. All of Bloomfield, old and young, will be able to make this 
18 acre park a true gem. When you step foot in this beautiful park, you'll immediately see the great recreational facilities we created, including a new soccer field that our nearly 1,400 youth will get a chance to play on through our Bloomfield Soccer Club. And I just want to recognize Barry Wiener and the volunteers with the Bloomfield Soccer Club. Thank you. Recreation and sports are extremely important to our youth here in Bloomfield, and we wanted to make sure we built a first-class facility. But what you may not see is the flood mitigation aspect. The freshwater wetlands complex has cr the creation of a 4.2 acres of wetlands floodplain that will store up to 10 million gallons of flood water designed to reduce flooding, not only in this area, but downstream throughout Bloomfield. And again, thank you all who are here to celebrate this beautiful open space with us today. And thank you who all along the way made this reality You've made a lasting impact to our community, and this is truly a special day for Bloomfield. So I'm grateful that our children of this community will now get to enjoy this amazing facility. Thank you everyone for being here today. Now, thankfully, the rain has held off, so we're gonna take a walk right onto the soccer field and do the ribbon cutting. Should we let Nick Barry. in? Barry. Come on in. Come on, Nick. 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 Come Everybody's smiling. Good. Three, two, one. So the, the park is not completely done yet. We are, we're at substantial completion. We still have punch list items that we have to do. Um, you know, just like some over, over, over spray and splatter for the concrete. We still have um, big belly trash compactors that have to still go in. We have some uh, light cleaning and we still have to obviously get, get grass and all that other kind of stuff. But as far as substantial completion where we're able to be on the field and actually able to permit it out, uh, today is the day. So we still have I'd say probably at least two to three weeks, maybe a month of just final touch, uh, you know, um, uh, punch list items that we have to try and take care of. But they're really smaller, insignificant type stuff. It's not any substantial uh, construction at this point in time. So big belly trash compactors. We have four, uh, four sets. So we have both recycling and uh, garbage. And what they do is they actually compact the garbage and the recycling inside the, uh, the, the, the cans. And then it's, uh, it's set up with a, uh, an email and it lets our DPW crew know when they need to be uh, emptied. So it, it really increases uh, efficiency and we're trying to keep the park clean as, as best we can. You'll see throughout the park, you're gonna see recycling cans and garbage cans. We have uh, doggy bag uh, dispensers as well. Uh, this playground here, we tried to go with the, with the, uh, the kind of wetland theme. So you can see the, you know, the tadpoles and the flowers and the turtles and the, and the uh, and the driftwood and things like that. So uh, that was part of the unique design. And this is this is tailored primarily for ages five to 12, but there are some two to five year old uh, apparatus here as well. And, um, you know, some of the park we were, we were caught on constraints as far as um, how much we could build and how much we could uh, expand just because of uh, the, the environmental impacts also on stream encroachment and different things like that. So we were, you know, only able to do a 12 U field here, but the 12 U, U field will absolutely serve um, a great population of our of our soccer crew. And same thing here, um, you know, we're bound by certain constraints. So this was the biggest uh, playground that we were able to put in here with some custom pieces. Uh, one thing that was really important, and I can't stress enough, our consultants and our and our designers and engineers they, when they really took every aspect of this whole entire project and, and really saw it, what the end product would be. Um, you know, we have a small bleacher system over there, but all the different benches that go all the way along this path, you could watch uh, a game 
pretty much from any part of this park. Uh, also up here, we have a sitting wall that, so if you have, you know, multiple children here, let's say you have a five-year-old that's not playing till one o'clock, but you have an eight or nine-year-old playing now, you'll be able to watch, you know, your youngest on the playground here while watching them uh, play. So it's, it's really a great opportunity for families to come out and make a day of it. Um, we're excited. Uh, Bloomfield Soccer Club has a permit today at four o'clock. Uh, they're going to be on the field uh, seven days a week starting today. Mike, so, how yeah. How many kids do play in that soccer field? And what, what does it do for where they're currently playing? How does it alleviate their... So, I mean, currently right now, our soccer club has, uh, I think, well over 1,400, I think the mayor said. And they're using facilities that are either soccer facilities, but we're also using some of our baseball field for multi-use fields. So what this ultimately does, this allows us to, to schedule people here seven days a week, kids to be able to play. And obviously having the turf allows us on a day like today, maybe where it rained a little bit or it actually poured overnight, you could play on this field right now. So that obviously increases the uh, usability of this field. And what it does is it gives Barry and the soccer club an opportunity to uh, really um, expand their program. Um, I don't think they're going to be able to create, you know, more games and more practices, but they're going to have more availability uh, to do so. So that's something that's, you know, really important to us. It's important. Obviously, active recreation uh, is something that our mayor and council are very, uh, you know, very in tune to. They know that we need that. And then we also have passive recreational opportunities. If you want to come here and there was a red tail hawk that was going, that was flying around. Be careful with your dogs and your uh, and your smaller pets. But uh, we also have uh, you know deer that are that are jumping all over the place and fox and we're gonna have all different type of uh, you know turtles and frogs and snakes and all that kind of there too. So we hope to be able to utilize the uh, wetland uh, more as it as it becomes uh, substantially uh, complete. Um, right now we do have we do urge the uh, community not to go into the wetlands it's extremely important we need at least five years for the wetlands to take uh, at that point in time we might be able to do some bird watching and environmental type things but we need to try and keep people uh, out of that aspect of the park uh, you know at this point in time so as we as we kind of continue down these walking paths there's a walking path as you can see down over there it comes all the way around the furthest walking path all the way around is just about a quarter mile so it's about 1300 so 1320 is a, is a is a full quarter mile so if you take the large loop it's almost like a it's a it's a quarter mile we have paths here paths here and they they're strategically put so that you could walk and see all of the things that are going on as we uh as we walk around so and then on the walking paths we have four uh fitness stations um, so for people that are looking to get exercise, don't, not only walking, uh, there's uh, different fitness for arms and legs and different things like that. Uh, they're ADA accessible, which is extremely important to us, just like this uh, surface of the ground has, uh, uh, you know, it's barrier free and ultimately it uh, provides a safe opportunity for kids to be able to play here. These are some of our custom pieces that we had designed, the turtle and the driftwood. We just wanted to try and go with the theme of, of the wetlands. And you can see we have, you know, the flowers and the reeds coming up. I thought that was really uh, a unique uh, opportunity um, to do that. Then up here, we kind of call it like the, I guess, the patio or kind of picnic area. Um, you have to access it by, by the other direction or we could walk around. But uh, this up here, we have uh, more, more seats and more benches that you could look out and overlook the field. This, this is the highest elevation of the park right now. I think it's about, I think it's 158 above sea level and it all i think it goes down all the way down to like 148 or 149 so there is you know some undulating slopes but everything you know kind of uh drains in a certain direction so that we have we help the wetland and we ultimately uh you know have proper drainage throughout the facility so we have some more picnic benches up here we're going to have more uh big belly uh trash compactors will go up there as well as soon as they come in and then another fitness station uh in the back there's a black eight foot perimeter fencing all the way around the whole entire property. And uh, ultimately too, we, uh, we have you know, netting and, uh, and fencing here so that when the soccer ball does happen to get you know, kicked over or kicked out, it's gonna stay in play and we'll be able to, uh, to still utilize uh, the ball. Obviously we don't wanna go. So you know, one area that's a little bit unique, we have this huge, huge retaining wall. I can't really tell now, but when you get closer uh, to the path over here, um, it goes probably from about four feet all the way down to the other side, uh, down towards the wetland. And that obviously helps if in case of a flood, the river runs parallel to the wall. 
Uh, this was just recently seeded and hayed, so we're still waiting for the grass to come back in and, uh, and grow. It's not really the greatest planting season right now. Um, so like we said in, in, uh, earlier in this, in, uh, when, I, when I opened up the opening remarks, the Clark Thread Company um, actually picked this spot because of the fresh water. And I see that we have our, we have, we have our resident historian here, I believe, at some point they dammed, they dammed Clark's Pond, which used to be brownies, browns, or not sure what it was. Oh uh, no, it was it was dammed for Clark's Pond. It was always dammed for Clark's Pond. So I'd say this is probably so we have our, the golf course here, it's Glen Ridge Country Club, and then beyond that. So I'd say it's probably about a mile, maybe if that, probably from there. Um, now over here, this is just this is just the grassed area. I'm probably envisioning while there's games going on here, uh, there's probably going to be some practicing or playing down here. We don't really promote that because it's not the actual facility, and we want to make sure that we're not bringing mud and dirt and grass onto the onto the uh, the turf field. But similar to Foley Field, if you go to a football game on Friday night at Foley Field, quote unquote, like the practice field behind it, there's always kids playing playing football and things going on while the actual games are going on. So we try to really use as much space because we were limited with space so we tried to use that space to the best of our ability um and again we have some you know some riparian rock here to uh for you know for water and for uh you know everything kind of drains into uh the wetland there's the system in here uh from the field also drains into into that and there's also holding tanks and i'm not 100 percent versed on it but i believe there's holding tanks underneath the the uh the parking lot as well that will also hold water and then they'll filter out into the wetland as well one thing that we were we were adamant about is we wanted to have dual access uh into this park that you could access it through lion gate off of uh, broad street which is by glen ridge parkway but also here there's a foot traffic uh bridge and a pedestrian uh access so for the people on Broughton Avenue side, Lakewood side, Clark Ave. You know, if they were able to see the park from their backyard, they would only be able to access this by, by going all the way down Bay Avenue and all the way down Broad Street to get here. So this is only for uh, foot traffic. We'd prefer everyone to park inside the parking lot and not park uh, over there and walk through, but it is another opportunity um, for people to get in. Always having a park of this magnitude and ultimately as big and as as uh as many people as we want to be here we wanted to be able to give access um obviously from both sides of town and we all we ultimately wanted um a safe way to get in and out god forbid there was ever an emergency or something along those lines so we come back around in the field house we have two uh ada compliant bathrooms we have a maintenance garage where our DPW does a great job our, and our park maintenance department, they're gonna be maintaining these fields and this park on a daily basis. So they have a, a maintenance garage here and then we also have a concession stand that we're hoping that all of the different clubs that are able to use this are able to use uh, the concession stand as a way to provide food and snacks to the kids but also a way to fundraise. Because as we all know, there's uh, you know nominal fees to pay but the more fundraising that we do and the more fundraising that those organizations do, uh, we don't have to put it to the end user, to the actual resident. So uh, that is another fundraising tool for us. And then if we want, we could walk over to the, uh, to the wetland and take a, take a peek over there. And uh, that would be the end of the tour. You know, it's amazing to see that you know, we were playing on a dirt pile and now for the next generation, you know, our kids are gonna be playing on a state of the art you know, facility. So we've always talked about it being a generational you know, a generational park and something that, you know, the future generations are going to be able to uh, to utilize and to enjoy. So you'll see that the, the grass is a little wet and that's obviously poured, but um, you could see all the different trees and rock piles and some down trees that were put there strategically. So obviously you see a bunch of birds before. Uh, there were definitely some deer here and some fox. There was a red-tailed hawk sitting on that, on that uh, telephone pole. But ultimately, um, you know, this is this is the 4.2 acre uh, fresh wetland that we have, and you'll see some pathways. And again, we we urge residents, please do not do not go into the wetlands. We hope that later on down the road, five years, six years down the road, we might have an opportunity to do some environmental studies. We might be able to do some 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 environmental classes. But right now, it's important that 
we don't have garbage in there. It's, we don't have people walking through, and we don't want people letting their dogs loose. And we are trying to keep the deer and the geese out. All of those, uh, all of the fences that are around those those plants, and there's hundreds and hundreds all the way along there and over by the spring brook as well. That's to prevent the deer from eating and uh, killing the trees. So, Mike, the, uh, the plant the vegetation is basically native. Uh yeah, native native species, some some wild some wild flower and things like that. Uh, this this will this will get cut like every six months. It doesn't have to be cut often. And then the berms, we want to let them grow a little higher so that it's more natural. Um, so that's again something that we have a we have a maintenance contract with one of our uh, with the with the um, I believe it's Enviroscapes, and they'll be coming back for the next four years, uh, four to five years coming and, and making sure that uh, everything is going uh, as planned. There's also monitoring wells here, which is required by DEP and Green Acres. So we have an LSRP that comes in and checks the, uh, the wells and the monitors to make sure that the wetlands are working the way that they're supposed to and that everything still here remains clean. Um, so there were talks of, you know, an environmental center at some point being in this area that's, you know, I think in a dis you know, far, da far down in the, you know, the distance, I don't think it's going to be happening anytime soon. but. Uh, we did provide uh, provisions for that. We have electric and gas and, and everything here, so it's something we wanted to do down the road. Uh, that's something that we could definitely do. It's just at this point in time, budgetary constraints and construction and timing didn't allow us to do it. But um, again, the beauty of this park, it's a, it's a pocket park. You know, we talk about all of our, you know, we have the big, huge Essex County parks and Watsessing and Brookdale Park, um, and they're fantastic, but our municipal park system 12 parks in all, uh, 12 parks in all, including this one, uh, are tucked away. So they're tucked away off the beaten path. So they're really neighborhood parks. So this is not only a neighborhood park, and it's great for the neighbors in this area, but we invite everyone from town to come and, and go through our whole entire park system. And you mentioned before about the, you know, the Morris Canal Greenway. Um, I know we're, you know, Councilman Rockwell and, and you and I have been talking about, you know, are there ways that we can incorporate the, uh, the Greenway? You know, that goes all the way down from Wrights Field all the way up to Morris Canal Park at Oak Tree Lane. There's definitely ways that we could try and connect this because of Broughton Avenue. So that's, sky's the limit, right, uh, Councilman? So we'll see. We have some more signs going up and everything else. But it's, uh, I can't thank uh, the mayor and council and all of the uh, township departments. I didn't get a, real, a chance to say it there at the end, but there's so many departments that are behind the scenes. And I don't want to name them because I don't want to neglect, but just from the administration and finance and engineering and the mayor's office, Diana uh, Avilas, and it, they just, everyone really worked on this project to make it uh, a reality. And obviously the mayor and council and all the, the partners that we met today. But uh, Lion Gate Park is open. We are ready for business and, uh, and we invite you. Thinking, there's a fox, right there's a fox in there. there. So we want to, uh, we definitely want to uh, invite everyone here. We ask that you, uh, you tread lightly. Obviously, there's plenty of garbage cans here. When you come, please take everything with you. Please uh, put your garbage and recycling in the cans. And uh, it's our duty to clean the parks and make sure they're safe. But I think it's your civic duty to make sure that uh, you clean up after yourself so that the next person has the opportunity that you did. And uh, there are parks. So let's try and keep them clean and let's use them. Thank you.